let's talk about memory leaks. In order to do so, I have created this uh, simple Ruby on Rails application, which reproduces an issue I ran across some time ago. So what's going on here? It's quite simple. There's only a single table called post, and this has several fields, but only the title and permalink are the ones we're interested in. So right now we have lots and lots of posts that have the title populated, but the permalink is nil. And there's also a rake task that iterates over all these posts, and then it populates the permalink based on the post title. And here there is an issue because we're running out of memory. First of all, we need to confirm that this is indeed a memory leak. So what I'm interested in is measuring how much memory are we using. And in order to do so, I'm going to use a gem called get process memory. And this returns us how much memory we're using in kilobytes, uh, megabytes and other units. But if you're not on uh, Linux on the Mac, on Windows, you have to use this sysproctable gem, which I guess it's an equivalent. In any case, let's install this. And then we can measure things. Using this is quite straightforward. So as you can see from the readme, we only need to instantiate this get process mem class and then we can print the memory used in different units, bytes, kilobytes and so on. So I'll just copy this line. And then I'm going to place this inside our rake task. So I'm going to instantiate this here and then just do put mem.kb and this will provide us the amount of memory our Rails application is using. Now, depending on how many uh, gems you're using, this will be a greater value. In any case, I'll also print this at the end of each patch. So we should be seeing this getting called and then as we process more and more batches, we should see how much memory each of them is using. Now there is one slight problem. That is, I have hundreds of thousands of posts in my database, so I really don't have time for this to finish. So I'll just do here, say limit 5,000. So this should only print 10 times. Well, 11 plus the initial print. In any case, let's run this break task. So this is the first put statement, basically the blank rules application. And as I said, as we finish more and more batches, we'll see how much memory this is using. Now, bear in mind one thing, that this doesn't necessarily mean that we have a memory leak just because the value has increased. It can also mean that the garbage collector hasn't been triggered yet. Even calling GC start is not a guarantee that the garbage collector will run immediately. Therefore, it's best to try things out with a bit more data to make sure like we're doing here. So we're not expecting the value to come back to its initial value, but rather become constant at the very least at one point. However, as we can see, the value has increased quite a bit and it doesn't show any signs of stopping. So there's definitely an issue here. A memory leak basically means that somewhere inside the code, there's something that still references some of the variables, the data that we created. So these can't get garbage collected. We can try to figure this out by looking at our code, analyzing the gems and seeing what's going on. But this can be really difficult because the code could have some callbacks, for example, or libraries could have some other dependencies and it can really get quite complicated. In order to determine what's retaining the data that doesn't get garbage collected, I'm going to use another gem called heap profiler created by Shopify. 
So basically, this keeps track of what's going on within a code block. And it saves this to a place on our machine. And then it's able to analyze this uh, save dump. And we'll see in a moment. So I'm going to jump to the gem file. And here I'm going to add the heap profiler. Heap profiler. And then inside the console, I'm going to run bundle install. And afterwards, we can um, actually use this. So in order to do so, I'll copy these lines from the readme. And then I'm going to use them inside our rake task. So I'll just paste these in. I'm going to remove this and just put our code inside the heap profiler block. So basically, this is going to create a report of what's going on within this block and it's going to save it at this location here. So I'll just provide it a path. Let's say temp maybe a memory leak. So it's going to create a folder called this. And then I'm going to run the rake task again. So this has finally finished and we can have a look at the folder we just created. And actually, let's uh, see the file size. And the allocated heap in particular has 15 gigabytes, which is quite a lot. Whereas the retained one, which, uh, which is the one we're interested in, is only 17 megabytes. And in order to analyze this, we can call heap profiler and provide a path to the folder we just created. By passing in the minus R flag, we should be able to analyze just the retained uh, heap. However, although this has been committed, there's no release with this yet. So you will probably need to pass in the git branch. But for me, in this case, I'm just going to analyze this entirely. OK, so this has finally finished. And this is a rather lengthy report. Here we can see the strings that get retained. And there are also allocations as well. Uh, this is read from top to bottom, so that's why it's kind of difficult to tell. But this, for example, is the retained string report. So we can see this post load string is getting retained uh, 411 times. And scrolling a, a bit more, we can also see where things are getting retained in the first place. So uh, let's scroll a bit. Let's see. Yeah, these allocations, we're not interested in these. Retained objects by class, so we know that strings are getting retained. And let's scroll above. The location where these are getting retained is in this place, in libhoney. And libhoney is a dependency of uh, Honeycomb, which is an analytics library. and. At this point, we already know quite a bit, but if we scroll even more, we'll get even more information. So uh, some other places where objects are getting retained. And if we scroll up a bit more, we can see the gem as well. So um, there are multiple ways of interpreting this information. And if we scroll a bit more, we'll basically see the allocations as well. For example, these are allocations and you can see this is a lot of memory getting allocated but this is not what we're interested in today but having this said we already know that this honeycomb library is the one that is uh, giving us a hard time so we know what we're looking for it's this honeycomb beeline library and let's uh, see how things are going without it. I'll uh, see where we initialize this and it's in initializer. And I'll just comment the entire thing. And then let's try everything again. So I'll just run the rake task again. But actually before doing this, let's uh, remove all the heap allocator code. So let's find the rake task. And here I will just comment these out. So now we can uh, run everything again. Let's see how the memory looks. 
So we can see this actually looks uh, a lot better. And as I said initially, we won't necessarily expect this value to be identical every single time. It may go up and down just a little bit from time to time, like it did now. But this is good. It basically means it has stabilized so we don't have any more memory leaks. Now, this is all nice and well, but what's really going on? Where is this information getting stored? So let's go back to our code. So I'm just going to introduce the leak again. I'll jump to the honeycomb initializer and I'll put everything back. And next, let's put a debugger somewhere, maybe around here. And then let's not put 5,000 here, maybe just 1,000 or two because this is taking a bit of time on my end. And now let's uh, run everything again. And by the way, the binding pry, this is provided by the pry gem, which I have installed, which is nothing more than a fancy debugger, but it's something that I do enjoy using. So what's really going on is that inside thread current, there's some information getting stored by this gem. So for example, let's see what we have here. So we have two things from uh, Honeycomb. So it's this and this one. And it's in the latter that Honeycomb stores a lot of information. So let's uh, have a look really quick. And we can see a lot of information here as we scroll down and as this processes more and more things, basically this will get bigger and bigger. So uh, this is basically what we need to fix. But this is not something that I'm going to do inside this video, but ultimately the way to figure this out should be hopefully a bit clearer now. In any case, there are some lessons here. Where should you even check for variables? So for example, thread current is uh, is one of those places, but obviously you have more than one, a single thread. For example, in Puma, I have like 16 threads. Uh, so inside threads, you can have uh, variables. You can also have, um, for example, global variables, class variables are some of the places where information can get stored for a long time. There are some other places like particular caches and even cache keys. But usually these sort of things like have here this analytics or loggers, these are the places you should uh, search for these variables. And also it probably goes without saying, but metaprogramming is definitely something that will cause you headaches when you're trying to debug things because it's very difficult to find the source of the problems. I do hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.